Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them, and do they sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're doing the Legacy Series, so what is this? This is when I take an artist that made music way back before the 21st century, but who has proven to be a vital artist in this century and has really been pushing the envelope. So we've hit up three artists so far. We did the first one on David Bowie. Then we did, you know, his career goes back to the 60s. And then we did Bjork and Radiohead, whose careers go back to the 80s. And today I'm going to look at Robert Plant. Now, you probably wouldn't argue about those other three. But Robert Plant, you know, might be some divided opinions on that. But his self-described country and eastern music that he's done in this century has been fantastic. I'm a huge fan. And uh, I realize some might say, oh, that isn't he, wasn't he the front man of Led Zeppelin? Yeah, Led Zeppelin's classic rock. But his music now, he has so separated himself from that catalog. And to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I took uh, his six albums that he did in the 80s and 90s, not counting the Honey Drippers or his two collaborations with Jimmy Page. And I just went to all music and I looked at the average rating. It's three and a half stars, three three-star albums and three four-star albums. You go to his seven albums in the 21st century, 4.2. Now, maybe, maybe possibly, you could argue that ratings are becoming a little more liberal. You know, there's a discussion about that. We could do a whole video on that, that uh, people aren't as critical maybe as they used to be. But even so, seven-tenths of a star. And I would agree with that assessment. I think that his 21st century career to, to go 4.2 is about right. And so today we're going to rank his seven albums. And um, I did a really nice video on this. It was about a half hour long with a lot of uh, sound clips. The whole thing got blocked, all of it. Even some of the uh, originals that I played of his cover songs where I played the original and then I played the, um, his, his cover version or he and Alison Krauss's cover version. All of it got blocked. It was just a mess. So if I ever do a Patreon page, we can throw that up there. So today I'm just going to talk about these albums. I cannot play any music. It's uh, All of these clips were less than 30 seconds and they all got blocked. But this country eastern, what does that mean? You know, obviously it's a pun on country and western music. He's doing this blend of Americana and North African Mideastern music and looking at it all is folk music and then just blending those and it's really quite quite a, a brilliant thing and if he's not the top artist doing this he's certainly the one with the most clout so let's get into the ranking I'm gonna use Spotify here as a uh, guide you know to put me through this uh, here's his, dis his discography and He's done um, two collaborations with Alison Krauss and then five solo albums, four as Robert Plant and one as the Band of Joy. Now, my number seven album is Raise the Roof, the most recent one, and I like this album quite a bit. So I was trying to figure out why don't I like this as much as Raising Sand. And so I'm going to pull up the, um, excuse me, I got an itchy nose here. The um, going to pull this up and try to explain why these first two songs, Quattro, Worlds Drift In, is a uh, world, world Drifts In, is a Calexico song. That's a band from Tucson. And I slightly prefer Calexico's original over their reading of it. And then The Price of Love is really strange. That's a cover of an Everly Brothers song. And on that one, they slow the tempo way, way down. So that's an old trick. What you do is you slow down the tempo of a song in order to illuminate the lyrics. And it's very effective. Um, I, I can think of many examples of it. Uh, most of those that come to mind are older songs. 
But um, on this one, I, I don't think it really adds anything to the song. In fact, if anything, it subtracts from it. I, I kind of prefer listening to the Everly Brothers. Then the album picks up. Would you uh, go with track three, four, and uh, five here? Go your way, trouble with my lover, and searching for my love. I love their versions. Uh, then Can't Let Go. Uh, we're back to that again. That was a song uh, that Lucinda Williams covered. She did not write it. Uh, so it's... It, you could say it's a cover of a cover, except the guy that wrote it didn't release his own version for many, many years. Um, I like Alison Krauss's version. It has uh, her wonderful inflection and then this wicked slide guitar on it. Um, it Don't Bother Me is a song I don't remember off the top of my head what my impression of that one was, but You Led Me to the Wrong is fantastic. That's a gallows song. Uh, you um, made me kill that man because you cheated with him. Great reading by Robert Plant, very emotional. I, I think I like his version better than the old country banjo gospel blues version. Last Kind Words Blues, sung by Alison Krauss, really good. Um, High and Lonesome's an original, written between Robert Plant and T-Bone Burnett. It's fantastic. And then we come back to what I'm talking about with this album, Going Where the Lonely Go. This is a Merle Haggard cover, and I don't think anybody, Allison, who sings it on this song, or Robert, if he sang it on this song, could possibly top Merle Haggard's um, 80s uh, album going where the lonely go that's just as good as country music gets so and then somebody was watching over me is uh, pretty much a toss-up between the original so in other words what I'm saying here is compared to their other collaboration I don't think they elevate as many songs uh, but the production is perfect T-Bone Burnett produced this again and the instrumentation's perfect, the playing's perfect, uh, the fiddle, the singing, everything is sonically perfect. Just not quite, you know, what I want compared to the other collaborations. So I give this album three and a half stars, my number seven album, Raising Sand from 2021. So number six. So, so far, what we're going to do here is we're going to count backwards. Um, Carrie Fire, great album. Love this quite a bit. Um, this is one of two albums that Robert Plant produced. Uh, Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar and the Make... And I'm sorry, it's called the Make Queen. Uh, Carrie Fire. And I think his production is really good. Um, if I have any criticism of Robert Plant's music in this century, it's that his first couple albums sometimes have questionable production choices, especially on the vocal production. There's a thing they do with all of his albums, including these, where when he increases his intensity, then they put all this delay on the vocal to make it more dramatic. And, you know, sometimes I wish I could just hear his natural voice. It's such a great instrument. But um, there are two albums of originals. And they're both uh, country and eastern. Uh, but what's different about the two albums is the instrumentation. So Lullaby is full of all these exotic instruments. You have Gimbri and Ritti and um, Oud and all these different instruments. And on this particular album, Carry Fire, it's just guitar, bass, drum, and keyboards. So you've got some electronics. Uh, so what they do here is they, uh, Justin Adams does uh, this Westmalian style guitar playing, and, it, and it's just an electric guitar, so it's just a style, it's not an in instrument. So what they do on this album is they bring that feel to it, but they do it with traditional instruments, and they do a great job. I love this album. So the May Queen, uh, which is a nod to Stairway to Heaven, that's in the lyrics of that song. It's a good song. New World's a good song. Season song, okay. Dance With You Tonight. This is maybe one of the average tracks on the album. Uh, so I would, I would, I'm not so excited by track four. Dance With You, I'm sorry. Track five, Carving Up the World Again. Um, 
musically great, lyrically okay. Uh, Away with words is fantastic. Uh, Carry fire, the single is fantastic. Bones of Saints has that uh, West Mali and Tuareg uh, desert nomad uh, blues guitar that's so wicked. Just love it. It comes in once during the song and then again on the outro. It's really uh, wonderful. Keep it, keep it hit is okay. Bluebirds over the mountain, really nice and obscure 45 that he pulled out of. I don't know where he pulled it out of. It was not a well-known song, and that's really beautiful. And then Heaven Sense. Okay, so I think it's a strong album. I give this um, four stars. It's from 2017, self-produced, and um, guitars, bass, keyboards, guitar, bass, drum, and keyboards, if I can get that right. So uh, that's it. That's my number six album is Carry Fire. Going to keep counting backwards. Uh, I hate to do this, um, but Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar. This is um, this is my number uh, five album, and lo love this album. So it starts off with Little Maggie, which is a blues song, but then they give it a North African feel. And uh, they have a guest musician on this album. Uh, well, more than one, but. Jude, Judah Kamara, I think is his name, and he's a griot singer and player. He plays the Riddy, which is a one-string fiddle, and he plays that on this song. And so this is a really good example of a track where you take and you meld those styles and you just call it folk music. And it's great. Um, Rainbow is a very good song. It's a single, not my favorite song from the album, but it is... Uh, a really strong song. Pocket Full of Golden I like. Then Embrace Another Fall. This has another guest musician on it, Julie Murphy. And she sings in Welsh on this song. So you've got this you got this album that's already country and eastern with the Americana and the Africa. And then you throw in this Welsh singer. So maybe on paper it shouldn't work, but it, it does. It's a lovely vocal. Uh, love that part of this song. Turn It Up is kind of a rocker, and um, yeah, it's really got a lot of energy. Stolen Kiss is a song that has this beautiful piano motif, but I think the lyrics are average on that song. Um, just the title, A Stolen Kiss, it gives you maybe a, an idea of like, uh, okay, it's just kind of a plain love song, but the music really elevates it. Somebody There decent track and uh, poor Howard is uh, Robert Plant uh, rewriting a lead belly song so that's uh, that's terrific and we go back to uh, J Judah J I think his name is Judah the griot player he uh, chimes in on this song again and then you close with three really strong songs house of love up on the hollow hill and uh, Aberdeen which is uh, kind of kind of takes you back to track one, Little Maggie. So it's a, a similar treatment and it really wraps up the album nicely. So I like this album just a little bit better than Carry Fire because I think it has less average tracks and less average lyrics. And speaking of lyrics, this is a good time to say, if you want to criticize Led Zeppelin, you know, you had Bonham and Jones and Page and Plant and Page was a great producer. If you wanted to find one criticism of Led Zeppelin, it would be the lyrics. That, that's what I would argue. A lot of mama, 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 and hey baby, and you know, some of those early Led Zeppelin albums had some pretty lazy lyrics. Uh, about the only weak point in that band, but yeah. So what happens here uh, is Robert Plant has continued to improve his lyric writing, even during the Zep days and then through the 80s and 90s, but man, in the 21st century, he usually writes really, really good lyrics. Um, on this album, there are two or three songs maybe with not as good lyrics, but uh, overall, this is a stronger album than Carry Fire. I'm still giving it four stars, but this one is a strong, strong four stars. So coming in at number four, well, guess what? We're still counting backwards, you know. And 
So we're going to go with the Band of Joy. Um, this is a covers album, and it was produced by Buddy Miller, and he does a great job on this album. Now, what I like about this is the uh, covers, they, it's a wider range of music. So we can start right off the bat with Angel Dance, which is a Los Lobos song. And it's kind of a toss-up for me which version I prefer. They're kind of even Steven. Uh, David Hidalgo from Los Lobos, I believe he plays on this song. He plays an instrument called Uranja, which is a little tiny Mexican guitar. So you've got this Mexican feel on here now. Uh, yeah, you're just pulling from these new sources on Band of Joy. It's a very inspired album. House of Cards is a Richard and Linda Thompson song. And then Central 209 is an original, but when you listen to the song, you realize it pulls from a lot of uh, old lyrics and old styles. Silver Rider, this is where this album gets really super interesting. This is a cover by the band Low from their Great Destroyer album. And uh, that's a 21st century album, so not going back to the 40s or 50s or any of you know old timey music. He's uh, right there with the uh, uh, modern music, and his cover, Silver Rider, is fantastic. Then he does um, a couple songs, You Can't Buy Me Love and Falling in Love Again, which are old traditional. So now you get back to the uh, older music. The only sound that matters. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head who wrote that song, but I've... On all of these songs, I've listened to the originals and then his version back to back. And I think the only sound that matters is elevated. It's, uh, it's The cover is better than the original. Monkey is another song by Lowe from The Great Destroyer. And Lowe, by the way, if you're not familiar with them, is what they call a slowcore band. Very intense music at a slow tempo. Uh, just um, really love that. Um, uh, you know, I never thought of it before. They might have, Lowe might have inspired God Speed You Black Emperor a little bit. Not sure about that, but uh, Lowe came first. They started making albums in the, in the, uh, I think the mid-90s maybe. So that version of uh, Monkey, fantastic again. And then they switch gears, Cindy, I'll Marry You Someday. That song uh, was originally called Cindy, and it was most famously done by Ricky Nelson in the 1950s, so they just take you right back. So you got a lot of nice um, uh, change-ups on this album. Harm Swift Way, nicely done. Uh, I don't remember who does the original. Satan, Your Kingdom Must Come Down is a bluegrass gospel number that was done by a number of people, most famously the Stanley Brothers. And uh, their version's great. It's bluegrass, but Robert Plant's reading, he slows it down a little bit and gives it an incredible darkness. This is uh, one of the stronger tracks on the album. And then uh, he closes with Even This Shall Pass Away, which is, um, you know, a somber song. And so you've got, you got this somber song with songs like Cindy, I'll Marry You Someday. Just a really uh, delightful roller coaster of songs. I love this album. We're still at four stars, but um, really almost four and a half. This is a fantastic one. When I first started this disc discography, I thought maybe this would be my number one album. I have always responded to this, but in running through these albums, which I listened to several times, I've spent hours and hours on this discography. These legacy series are the hardest uh, videos for me to produce because they're not reactions. Uh, I have to do my research on these. Um, but Band of Joy ended up coming in number four. So great job by Buddy Miller and all the musicians on there. Coming in at number... Where is it here? Where, oh, here we go. Still Counting Backwards, Raising Sand. And this would be a lot of people's number one album, and I can understand it. Cleaned up at the Grammys, and I'm not usually a fan of the Grammys, but I think they probably got it right. Um, Rich Woman here, which 
let me let me uh, just real quick I'm going to um, pull up I actually made a playlist of uh, the originals and the covers because my memory's not perfect here on uh, raising sand rich woman yeah see I could not remember little millet and his Creoles the specialty story so that was little Richard's record label New Orleans uh, record label so Rich Woman, they do a great version of that song. Uh, I think I prefer theirs a little uh, a little bit. Then a obscure artist named Rolly Sally did Killing the Blues. Uh, Allison sings on this one and slows the tempo down, but it works. It's uh, just beautifully, beautifully sung. Um, track three is Sister Rosetta Goes Before Us, written and sung by Sam Phillips. Now Sam Phillips, I think, is T-Bone Burnett's wife, I think. Um, and this is pretty even, Stephen. I like both versions on this one. Um, Polly by Gene Clark, who is also a member of the Birds. Uh, they do a great version of that. Um, Gone, Gone, Gone is an Everly Brothers song. I think they get it right this time. So just in terms of elevating the songs, I think they hit the mark more often on this one. Uh, through the Morning, Through, not sure what the whole title is there, but that's another Gene Clark song that he did when he was in a duo called Dillard and Clark. And then Please Read the Letter, real interesting. That was actually off one of the, um, off the second Robert Plant and Jimmy Page album. And the, you can see it's grayed out here. It's not allowed on Spotify. Um... But I've gone back and I've listened to the original of that, and they definitely elevate that one. Please read the letter. So much better done by um, Krauss and Plant, and Alison Krauss's fiddle on that song is killer. It has a great tone, and it's just really the perfect little icing on the cake there. And then they do a, a Tom Waits song. Trample, trampled Rose from Real Gone. So that's a delight. I'm a huge, huge Tom Waits fan. Enjoy that. Uh, Fortune Teller. This is maybe the first track where it dips just a little bit. Um, I uh, saw in an interview with uh, the three of them, T-Bone, Allison, and Robert, that uh, he had pitched for this. So when you read on Wikipedia, they say that T-Bone Burnett curated all the songs brought a list and they did his list. Well, it's not exactly true. Robert Plant pitched for two or three songs on this album. Fortune Teller is about a man who goes to a fortune teller, a female fortune teller, to get advice on his relationship and ends up falling in love with the fortune teller and then says, get a load of this line, and now she tells my fortunes for free. <laughs> so it's really a corny song, but it's delightful. It's fun. I think it's a slight dip down. Stick with me, baby, is an is another kind of um, just fun song, uh, you know. But then they come in with this Towns Van Zant cover, nothing, and this is wow. The lyrics on this song are are dark, very dark. And Al Allison's actually the one that wanted to darken up these albums. It's interesting watching the interviews with them. She felt like the music that she did with uh, Alison Krauss Union Station, is that the name of her band? Uh, that that was pretty happy music and she wanted to do something different and do something much darker. Uh, of course Plant was on board with that. Uh, Nothing is an incredible track. Um, it, it's kind of a one I didn't notice for a long time. You know, I think of the hits Gone 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 and Please Read the Letter. But nothing, nothing is a song that that Towns Van Zant wrote at the end of his life when he was very, very ill, and it's only available on a uh, album called The Memphis Sessions. It was the last thing he recorded before he died, and he was in pretty bad shape. And the, and so they uh, to say they elevate this is easy because he was not at his peak form, but the song is killer, and they do a great great thing on it. Uh, Let Your Loss Be Your Lesson by the blues artist Little Milton. That's good. 
then they cover Doc Watson, which is bluegrass. And um, you see these two titles are slightly different. Your Lone Journey, Your Long Journey. I'm not sure which one is the correct title. But Raising Sand, uh, my number three album, four and a half stars. Perfect instrumentation, perfect playing, perfect production, perfect song choice, just about perfect song choice. Uh, there's a reason it cleaned up at the Grammys. Great, great, great album. So this leaves us uh, with only two albums left. And so what's it going to be? Is it going? Am I going to keep counting backwards? That's what I've been doing so far. Uh, that would mean that my next album would be The Mighty Rearranger. However, I'm skipping over that one and going with Dreamland. Dreamland is a really interesting album. So this is the first time he worked with the Strange Sensation Band and uh, got guys like Justin Adams in here to uh, play guitar and just a, you know, got himself a permanent band instead of session musicians. And this is almost all covers. Funny in my mind, I believe I'm fixing to die, is a slight rewrite of a um, Bucka White song. Really well done. Morning Dew, um, Bonnie Dobson, I think, is the person who did that song, and she never became famous because she was sort of stage shy. And I think he elevates that song. I've listened to hers. It's very nice. Uh, but, uh, but I'll give the nod to uh, Robert Plant on this song. One More Cup of Coffee, Bob Dylan song from Desire, and I prefer the Dylan on this one, but it's still a great, credible interpretation of the song. Uh, one of my favorite Dylan songs, actually, so can't go wrong. Last time I saw her, I cannot remember who did that song originally. Um, song to the Siren is a Tim Buckley song. Now, for those of you that don't know, Tim Buckley uh, was um, Jeff Buckley's father, and they both died young. So it's kind of spooky the way they both died around the same age. Different circumstances, but... And there's a lot of uh, lyrics on here about swim to me, swim to me. And of course, Jeff Buckley died swimming. So, yeah, do 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 do, right? Um, I'll tell you, Tim Buckley's song is stellar. And you would think that nobody could cover it better, but This Mortal Coil did a killer version in the, I believe the 80s, but it might have been the early 90s. Uh, this Mortal Coil, beautiful version of the song, but I think my all-time favorite version of the song is this one right here. This is absolutely, achingly beautiful. One of the best love songs ever written with very creative lyrics, and Robert Plant really climbs inside the lyrics and just delivers uh, really a career high here. Uh, wow. Just, uh, if you haven't heard the song, you owe it to yourself uh, to listen to Song to the Siren by Robert Plant. Uh, or, or do what I did, play, play both versions, because uh, they're both good. When My Train Fair Home is an original, but again, you can just tell by the title that it's drawing from a lot of old sources. Darkness, Darkness. That is... Um, the Young Bloods, Jesse Colin Young, and I love Jesse Colin Young's voice. He's a wonderful singer, um, but I think Robert Plant makes it a little darker. Just gives it that moodiness that it. I don't know. I just I really like this version. I think it's incredible. Red dress. I don't remember who does that offhand. Hey Joe, most famously uh, done by Hendrix, though technically it was the Leaves that did it first old 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 song and boy is this tripped out so what i like about dreamland i didn't say this up front but dreamland is is where he started to bring in those african sounds really most prominently for the first time they're not as prominent as his later albums but what this album lacks in north african rhythms it makes up for in electronics and psychedelia this song, Hey Joe, is just tripped out. Oh my God, it makes you want to do drugs. 
it's just so it's just in your earphones it's just so wild and it's a great treatment so yeah i mentioned that the production on these first two albums is a little over the top and a little troublesome and yet they're my two favorite albums uh so apparently i don't mind it that much uh hey joe is really reworked pretty radically but it but it works and uh i, I enjoy this cover quite a bit and then Skip's song is by a band called Moby Grape. So how's that for a 60s name? And it was written by Skip Spence, who was a member of the band, and then he put his name in the song. And um, yeah, this is, a, this is a real good reading of it. So, And then it finishes with Dirt in a Hole, which is okay. Maybe that's one of the weaker tracks on the album, but Dreamland, four and a half stars. Uh, terrific album uh, this one was a real grower I've always liked it but as I did this discography and played it over and over again it just it just hit all the right notes so that leaves number one which is Mighty Rearranger you know and in doing this discography this is a good time before we close to talk about the two things that you have to look at in ranking this discography. One is that about half of his albums are covers albums and the other half are originals. So which do you prefer? Do you prefer uh, when he interprets other people's songs or, you, or do you prefer originals? And to me it's close, uh, but I went with Mighty Rearrangers, my number one, and it is all original songs. So obviously I like him quite a bit as a songwriter. And then the other thing that you have to look at is he did two albums with Alison Krauss and she sings half the songs on those two albums. So here, here's what I did. Here's how I treated that. I said, okay, the Allison songs for the album ranking, okay, because after this I'm going to do a top 10 songs. For the album ranking, I, th I threw it in there. The Allison Krauss songs are... I have to critique those right in with his songs and take it as a whole. So if she does a really good job on a song that elevates that album. Um, but on the top 10 so uh, songs, they're, they're going to be all sung by Robert Plant. I, I can't do a Robert Plant countdown and then throw an Alison Krauss song in there. But I, uh, I certainly, I, I think they're a seamless combination. There's something about that odd couple, uh, bringing together such an odd couple and having them harmonize so well together. Really, really nice. But the reason this is my number one album is it just has the least number of average or weak tracks. I will say that Another Tribe, which opens the album, would not be my choice for an opener. It's a good song, very strong song. Uh, I don't think it's the best song on the album. I would have uh, maybe opened it with track two, uh, but that's nitpicking. Um, but Another Tribe is strong. Shine It All Around is a great song, and the lyrics are very hopeful. Very hopeful, and I like his lyrics about, um, well, he pretty much um, says the world is imperfect, but it's the world he loves. And that's just a really powerful lyric. Um, Freedom Fries is an anti-Bush song, and it's delivered very straight. So I prefer my political songs with a bit more metaphor. But it's musically great. Um, Tin Pan Valley, which is a pun on Tin Pan Alley, it has uh, kind of opens with a whispered vocal. And then it just uh, explodes on the chorus in these uh, loud crashing guitars and drums and then it comes back down to the whisper wonderful dynamics on that song all the king's horses a really beautiful melody on that one the enchanter which was the second single is a strong track Takamba, which is uh you know an african word that's a that's a really strong track and then you get dancing in heaven maybe that's the first time on this album that you say eh Maybe that's not top tier uh, Robert Plant, 
then he, uh, but then he closes the album out very strongly. Somebody knocking, let the four winds blow. The title track, Mighty Rearranger, wonderful song, and that's a sort of sort of a mystic or cosmic or religious theme. The Mighty Rearranger. It has uh, impressions of uh, fate, you know. So if you believe in free will, it's a bit of a troublesome song. It uh, it kind of suggests maybe we don't have as much free will as we do, but I find that that makes it a very interesting song and one that I want to listen to again and again. And then Brother Ray, not a great track, but it's only a minute long, so I can kind of disregard that. And the rest of these on here are bonus tracks and remixes. So the more I listen to this album, sonically it just sounds great all the way through. There's not a weak musical moment and like I say, maybe a couple average lyrics, but all in all, uh, a terrific album, four and a half stars. And I think Robert Plant is one of the most vital artists in the 21st century. He has uh, had nothing to prove, had already accomplished everything. Uh, but is a restless spirit, a restless, creative, envelope-pushing spirit, and just um, would not settle for ordinary in any way whatsoever, and I admire the hell out of him. I have seen him a couple times in concert, but before this century. I saw him in the late 80s, um, when he had that sort of 80s haircut, and... Um, that was a uh, that was a good show. The Mission UK opened up on that one, and then in '94 or '5, I saw him with uh, Jimmy Page um, and a full symphony orchestra. And uh, the version of Cashmere was killer with that orchestra. Whew, that was great. Uh, never saw Led Zeppelin, but I will tell you a quick story before I close. Had a ticket in my hand, physical graffiti tour ticket in my hand was going to see Led Zeppelin and uh, he was in Greece and he had that car accident and broke his leg and they canceled the tour and recorded the album Presence instead so I got my money back for the ticket uh, today I kind of wish I had the ticket uh, just to look at it but um, I was that close to seeing the boys uh, but I didn't uh, so that's why I went and saw Paige plant later was like okay well that's that's as close as I'm gonna come uh, but I think I might like this discography even more than Led Zeppelin that's a really radical thing to say but that's how much I love these albums so hope you enjoyed this like I say we were not able to play any sound bites or music um, I'm gonna try it on the top 10 and see if I can get away with some snippets but Probably not, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. It's uh, the bots. The bots are at it. It's all their fault, and uh, nothing I can do about it. So you guys don't see that. You don't see the blocked videos, but um, in fact, that's why I'm a little bit late. Uh, I usually upload a video every day, and if you haven't seen a video from me in a couple days, it's because they did all this work on Robert Plant and then it was blocked and at that point I was too exhausted to do anything else but um, thanks for joining me on the channel um, I, I really th think highly of this artist and as we say here in Mexico Buen Dia and let me know what your favorite Robert Plant albums are or if you hate them tell me if you hate them uh, I enjoy reading your comments and if you like what we're doing on the channel hit the like or subscribe button it really helps. Thanks.